Well, psychedelics, including magic mushrooms, are one step away from becoming legalized in California. That's under a bill sitting on Governor Gavin Newsom's desk. Supporters of the bill cite the potential benefits of psychedelics, and some studies have actually shown certain psychedelics can help with depression, PTSD, anxiety, even substance abuse. But opponents do worry that making these drugs available could have devastating consequences if they fall into the wrong hands. Dr. Tricia Supi is a professor of psychiatric and behavior sciences at Stanford uh, joining us now. So doctor, how do psychedelics actually rewire the brain to help those dealing with severe mental health issues? Uh, thank you for having me on this important topic. Uh, so we don't fully understand how they work or for whom they'll be best, but I can give you an example I think illustrates a bit more about how they work. And that is in depression, it's as though your brain is in a ski rut. It just goes back and forth. It's kind of hyper-connected. So when you talk to folks with depression, they'll say that, that they just, they can't change their thoughts. They're in a rut. And we see the same thing with imaging, neuroimaging before psilocybin. And for those who respond well, again, this is treatment-resistant depression uh, to the psilocybin, it's as though they're out of the rut. They're now all the brain is talking to all the other pieces. And when you talk to the participants, they also uh, describe the same thing. Uh, we just recently completed a very small uh, pilot study in veterans at the Palo Alto VA. And the third of folks who did respond very well, they actually went into remission. So for a treatment resistant depression of many, many years to go into a remission after a single dose and have it last for at least months, is fairly astonishing. And yet that's what we've seen and others have seen as well. Please note, I didn't say everyone, I said about a third. So there's a lot more for us to understand. Uh, I think it's, it's, this is a potentially very important new treatment for, for medical use in treatment resistant depression. It's fascinating, and, and you said it's a third because we've also heard about the potential pitfalls of psychedelic use, so how can they potentially trigger psych, psych, uh, psychotic or even manic episodes? Yeah, so we're doing a clinical trial. So we're screening people very carefully. We're making sure that we don't feel there's a high risk of that. Unfortunately, with psychedelics, as we know from the 60s, there is a risk to a small percent of people who have either a personal history or a strong family history of either psychosis or mania uh, that it can be triggered and again, by a single treatment or a uh, single episode exposure to psilocybin. Uh, so I think that it's important to keep that in mind. These drugs are not without a harm potential. Uh, and I certainly have received a, a share of emails of folks who had a relative who did take mushrooms and unfortunately had a very negative outcomes. And this was not in a clinical trial or in a medical setting where there's a lot of support. This was out just in the wild. Um, in a city where it's decriminalized. So that doesn't mean it's illegal anymore, but it's decriminalized. And they took them uh, based on hoping for better outcome. So, so bottom line, uh, do you think the, the, the potential benefits actually outweigh those risks or, or do we need more studies? Like what, what is your opinion here? So we're still early in the studies. So if you look at the total number of patients who've been in depression studies with psilocybin, that number is still small. I think though that because people really have fairly astonishing responses when they have them, it's a little bit like having a stage four cancer and you take one dose of something with relatively small side effects and your cancer goes into remission because that is the level of severity of treatment resistant depression absolutely affects quality of life potential for suicide and, and other elements so i think that there is a potential benefit and i think it's important we explore it and understand it more clearly uh, i am i do have some worries about the decriminalization because there won't be monitoring there won't be support for people going through the psilocybin journeys or other classic psychedelics as well in the medical setting with support and screening whether it's a clinical trial or just being used medically, um, I would feel less concern and feel like the harms were being mitigated. What, what do you think we are gonna be in about a year? So I think in a year, if you're looking at the trajectory of approvals, MDMA, which is not a classic psychedelic, as you know, that's ecstasy. Mm -hmm. I think it's likely it'll be approved 
in by the FDA and rescheduled by the DEA sometime in 24 for the treatment of PTSD. Now that's not actually just the MDMA, it's MDMA with about 80 hours of therapy. So it's MDMA assisted therapy. Psilocybin is further back in timeline. They're just, one company has just launched two phase three trials. That's the kind of trial that the FDA wants to see in order to then approve a drug for a given indication. Since those are just launched, I would expect that assuming they're very positive, that, that it does show a separation in the arms for the treatment versus the non-treatment. I would, I would take a guess that if they're positive, we would have a potential approval for depression late 25 or 2026. Yeah, well, well, definitely a, a lot more information needs to be gathered, a lot more research needs to be done, but the potential benefits, uh, wow, just, just fascinating. So Dr. Tricia Supis from Stanford Health, thank you very much. Thank you very much.